I also collect whiskey, and we've seen a lot of premiumization, i.e. brands charging high prices for average whiskey with brilliant packaging, exotic names, and weird stories behind the product. Do you feel that something similar is happening in the fountain pen world with new manufacturers selling flashy pen bodies with a universal Bach or Yovo steel nib in prices often above $100? So I guess this depends if you consider charging above $100 as being a premium. Uh, I think by most kind of Especially people who aren't like accustomed to the fountain pen world, certainly paying $100 for a single pen seems certainly like a premium product. I totally get that. Um, but I think for what you're saying, the premiumization in this respect is, is it just being kind of like, you know, a vanity kind of puffed up to charge a premium just by making it look snazzier? Okay, so I think, you know, part of it is you're talking about like the Universal Bach and Yovo nibs. Well, those are that gets to an interesting place because it's not really universal, right? Like they're, they're somewhat more standardized. They do make nibs for a lot of different brands. Some of them are more custom and fitted to their brands. Some of them are more universal. Really, it just comes down to economies of scale. If a nib manufacturer can make one type of nib, sell it to a bunch of different companies, they can do that and produce them more in mass, make them cheaper, therefore more appealing, and it's a competitive edge, right? For Bach over Yovo or whoever else. Um, and so there's an appeal to that. Uh, at the same time, if they are universal, you're like, well, what's the difference between one pen or the other? If the actual writing portion of it is the same as, say, Yovo nibs, is not the same? Yovo nib the same? Yes, there could be some tweaking and stuff that's done at the individual manufacturer level. And of course, you have the feed and other things that come into play too. But more or less, the nib could be viewed as the important part of the pen and everything else is kind of just vanity, right? Mm, to a degree, I could see that argument, right? Like there's other things going on. You get element of craftsmanship, there's size and functionality, the filling mechanism, all that kind of stuff. But yes, to a degree, the nib could be considered somewhat universal if you're using a Bach or Yovo across a different brand, right? But there's other things that come into play. And what ends up happening, you have these economies of scale, universal nibs, if they can make them in large batches, that means they can afford to sell the same type of nib to an Edison, or we argue lay nibs, all Yovo, you know, or Twisby uses Yovo nibs too. So um, different manufacturers uh, of pens cannot have to basically make the huge investment of developing custom nibs. They can use what are really good nibs and fit them on their pens. And you could say like, okay, is a Yovo number six nib on a Twisby VAC 700R, how do you compare that to say a Edison Collier, right? Like they might do some individual tweaking, the feeds are different, the pen bodies are different, the filling mechanisms, yada, yada, yada. But part of that comes down to the different manufacturer and the other elements of the pen too. So, you know, I, I think about like Twisby, like they have a factory over in Taiwan. They produce much greater quantities of pens than say Edison does, right? Like Edison is a much smaller uh, manufacturer. They have, you know, you know, like four people in their company in Milan, Ohio. And uh, it's American made. There's an element of hand craftsmanship and stuff like that that might be different from some of these other manufacturers. A lot of different things come into play and they might use different materials and stuff that come into play and there's a lot of different factors that come in. So typically from my perspective, what's happening with these is it's not so much that there is what I consider to be a premiumization of let's just see how much we can get away with charging by making it look a little snazzier. That I'm seeing less of that actually. There's definitely some of that that goes on and some brands will certainly make a play for going kind of the luxury routes, charging a premium and making the packaging really nice and stuff like that. All depends on kind of what their target market is, right? Um, definitely here at Goulet, we have kind of more of an emphasis on new people getting in the fountain pen hobby. So there's more of an emphasis on value and less so on kind of the, the branding and the premiumization kind of stuff like you're talking about. Um, but I don't think that as a whole, that's like a super universal thing, especially with what you're talking about here with these universal nibs. I think a lot of them are more boutique brands that are smaller manufacturers that just have to charge because um, they're just dealing with smaller quantities and stuff like that. So there's less of economies of scale as say a, a Lamy or a Pilot or something like that. Um, so these, uh, these brands, you know, I think I've only been around in the pen industry for about eight years. So I, I have to rely on kind of what others tell me who've been in the industry for a lot longer. But from what I understand over the last eight years, I'm seeing a little bit less or are starting to st starting to see a shift a little bit away from premiumization, actually. Um, I'm starting to see more manufacturers making effort to come out with more affordable pens, starting to understand 
that okay if we if we keep on going up in our price and going premium yes we might be kind of aging with the pen market but we're not bringing anybody new in and that's going to kind of play itself out and then we're all going to suffer in the end so that's starting to kind of to kind of come around for some manufacturers so starting to see some emphasis on in that and i really like that um on the you know i think more of an emphasis was in like the 90s and the 2000s of coming out with like two thousand dollar limited editions constantly that was a much more common thing and certainly some brands will still do that um, but there's more of an emphasis of uh, some lower price things that are going to start to come out too so i think it's some brands are kind of balancing both but i i think that uh uh, I'm seeing probably less of that now as being a trend uh, for pen brands.